Hello and welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg. I'm Ed Piscor. And I'm Tom Scholey. Going to look at Jaime Hernandez's wrestling drawings, Queen of the Ring. Before we dive into this tome, Ed, tell us about Red Room. Can't disable the power on my label, man. Fantagraphics publisher of uh, the Jaime book. <laughs> Fantagraphics publisher of Red Room Comics, man. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. Every issue completely self-contained. Uh, you get a complete experience when you read an issue of Red Room. And if you dig it, come back for more. Got to thank you, Jimmy, for your cool variant covers. Got to thank the Kayfabe audience for making uh, issue four more popular than issue number two. So that that's a sign that bodes very, very well. Uh, you get these comics at your local comic shop. They were coming out uh, every four weeks or so. Issue four coming out like September 1st. Uh, you can read these comics ahead of time at my Patreon, patreon.com slash edpiscor. Three bucks for the archive there. Links to all this stuff are in my link tree in the description below this video. Tom, how about you? Here's Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics. It's uh, the whole story of Jack Kirby's life, uh, his, his time in World War II, his time, uh, you know, being a founding father of comics in general and uh, superhero comics specifically. Uh, you know, it's it, it, it's basically a life's work. I've, I've been interested in, in Jack Kirby for about as long as I've been an, a, an adult, and, and this is sort of the end result of that journey. It feels like the answer to how long how long did it take you to do this <laughs> right. book? 30 years? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <laughs> and uh, this was a little stop along the way, Fantastic Four Grand Design, where I got to uh, uh, get very intimate with one of Jack Kirby's signature creations, the Fantastic Four. I, I basically tell the entire story of the Fantastic Four from start to finish, uh, give it give it like a whole resolution and build up all in one volume. Very awesome. Jim, what do you have, man? You can join me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can download my out-of-print zines and mini-comics. I have about a dozen of those. Showing off the wrestling zine, a collection of my uh, ballpoint pen drawings, pen and ink drawings, cover work, everything wrestling related. It's one of those downloadable zines. Uh, you can also see my original art, process, scripts, Basically, how I make the comics I make, like Street Angel, Octobriana, and much more, on Patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. It's a good Ric Flair, man. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure whether to show my wrestling drawings before we <laughs> open up Jaime's book or not, but uh, show what off. the heck. Look, Thematically related. From, from the cover. Yes. The body language. This there's, there's propulsion here. This girl is getting pulled, and he just put... It's just that subtle tilt of the head that creates that trajectory. I love seeing the heel, uh, I mean, the, the, the tip of the toe, like, not on the mat. That's very accurate. And, like, this foot is at the base, and that one is just a little up. She's about to get her her, her momentum this up. Is, this is the tires off the road. You want to show some, some movement? Put that foot up. Yeah, it's really now, great. I find this cover compelling as well, but for different reasons. I love uh, I love the texture of the color, first of all. It's cover, it's got, it's got a little something to it. Uh, and I think it's a good choice for showing original art. Yeah, it's like and paper. I love this choice of not going with a high contrast, but showing the streaks of marker in there. Love that. Great, you know. And then, and then also this little touch here. I love that that little bit of drawing of like making the the bar, you know, turnbuckle. The turnbuckle. Yeah, you guys know the the wrestling <laughs> lingo. First note of all that is. This is a whole. This whole book is yeah, going what to is be wrestling book? drawings. Yeah. So uh, we can start flipping through it. But Tom, you call attention to that background, and it's important because this, the way this book unfolds is this is an entire body of work. You know, you can see the subtitle 1918, 1980. Whoa, I, I didn't know he was that old. <laughs> Essentially, this is your Love and Rockets time frame, yeah. you know, and uh, he has been drawing these things concurrently, but they're just his own collection. Like, it's not something that publicly most of these drawings have not been seen before this. Totally different materials than what he draws his comics with. So this background, those strokes are marker strokes. Yeah. These things are drawn with ballpoint pens, colored pencils, markers, rather than the traditional India ink, uh, you know, pen nibs and brushes that we see and associate with his with his work. That's what I didn't understand about this book because I just saw it promoted and I assumed it was going to be like a collection of like wrestling stories that he did, maybe like pulled from Love and Rockets and collected. But this, you're saying this is something, this is like just work he was just doing for fun. Like who is, who is this lady that like, it looks like Paula Dean as a wrestler or something. Like who is she? <laughs> That's Rena T, man. Yeah. So some of these characters are characters that work their way into Love and Rockets, but some of them are completely fictitious that over years he builds up stories for them. And what this text is that you see here is from interview conducted with the editor, Katie Skelly, and then the text is excerpt, you know, it's excerpted throughout this, uh, this collection. So you'll see notes at different places that talk about materials, talk about specific characters, 
talk about building characters and then talk about his connection to women's wrestling and how it's been like this lifelong thing. Selena injured back a little bit even though she won. <laughs> that's how you do. Absolutely. He even talks about how like he learned that the costumes, you know, like you'll see these and they show up a little bit more in the black and white, but they pinch in at the edges of the costume. He's, I love seeing they would, that. They would put thing. wire. They would put wire in there to keep the, you know, like their bathing suits or their costumes from like riding up or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then the result of that wire is you would get those little indentations of flesh mm -hmm. where that, where it was tight at. It's what I love about his art. It, it feel, it's so subtle, you know, it's so sensitive. It is. And like the shadows too, the weight in the shadows throughout this, like the first thing that sticks out to me is how great these black like skies are because they just... It's such a black and white world, despite the color on a few these, of these, these pages. These past couple pages kind of remind me of Galacy a little bit. Yeah. Who's the hill and who's the baby face in that image, huh, Jimmy? Man, that's a great point. Mm. That's a great point, because some of this stuff, you know, there, there there are tracks about the fetishization of what he's drawing here, right? Like, he goes back to his childhood of seeing these kind of res women's wrestling, you know, watching that mm -hmm. with his brothers and cousins and and how that stuck with him. But then there's also the part of, who are these characters in terms of heels and, you know, what does a prop do? What does posture, body language say about whether this is a heel or a baby face? Good belts. Good everything. I can't figure out the one part that's not in here is the reference level of what we're looking at. Because mm -hmm. it looks highly referenced, right? Like I It mean, looks they, perfect. They, it they look, all look perfect. Like, almost like photos. You know what, though? Right. If, if you're drawing from the imagination, it's got a very specific one directional light, light is coming from above and down below. So if you're a really skilled draftsman, you can figure that out to an almost photographic degree. I love that he gets into like the, the pieces that have lettering in them. And again, different materials, you know, just lettering with the ballpoint pen or with, with a felt tip pen, uh, you know, recognizable as high mace handwriting, but different than the lettering that you see in Love and Rockets. And look at this, a multi-generational family. Mm -hmm. Like, like, and just, it's it's the lines on the face can sell you on, like, you know, you know who the matriarch is, and, you know, that's probably an auntie, and then that's the, the kid. Yeah, and it's great, like, the semblances of faces, yes. but with a little bit different weight and age and stuff put on top of them. It, it just blows my mind. Uh, you know, he talks a little bit about wrestling magazines being something that you know once he found the wrestling magazines his i think it's a cousin or somebody would buy like uh porn mags and put them in wrestling mags to be able to like deliver them to his brothers and he would get the wrestling mags but when the when this stuff starts to enter like the uh that's funny having your yeah it is it's <laughs> it's incredible like you know like that's perfect right you, who would think that's what it is to like draw this part right um, but adding this whole world of like, you know, pretty highly polished illustrations that again, until, I don't know, a year ago, nobody was going to be seeing these. I would have liked to have seen the dates of, of the creation of these pieces. Yes. I like this book a lot. Like maybe my favorite book right now. How, and, uh, and how much of like the text have you read? I've read all of it. So like, he's like, he just drew like a page of Love and Rockets that day. He's kicking back, trying to enjoy himself, and then this is what he's doing for fun? Like, what? what's the... That's not spelled out exactly, and it does feel like a borderline fetish thing, almost an obsession that he's doing these drawings. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and it's nice to have the text, because I don't know that there's anything wrong with these drawings. You know, like, I yeah. don't know what would make them... Uh, fetish exactly, but it does have that sort of thing of like, these are well, done yeah, outside way, of his professional who, By the work. way, who, who gives a fuck? Well, to, I'm about, just trying to understand. Yeah, that's like, me putting that just on. Trying to yeah, under, yeah. That's not, uh, nobody seems to. Right, right. yeah. Um, like, because I, like, I'd hear stories about Jack Kirby where it's like, think about his work day and he's and then to kick back and have some fun, he's doing collages or he's like painting or he's like, it's, it's so like, I'm just getting like, is, this is like, like Jaime's version of that maybe. I, I think that could be true. Uh, because he does compare it to the comics and how, like, he says, you know, like, Maggie could say something and for the next 150 pages, I have to figure out how to work around that. Like, that's, that becomes, you know, carved in stone once it's printed and it's published. There are those little sensitive pieces. And with this Pretty stuff, nothing like that. You know, he can, mm -hmm. he can, he can make one of the, he can make the same character a heel in one drawing and a, and a face in the next drawing. And it doesn't really matter. You don't have somebody, like, really clinging on that Jim, the way were, they do love and rockets you were about you were uh you were vamping at first to, to 
to let us know that you were also mad that uh, there's no dates for the creation of these pieces? I, I am mad at that, and I'm mad at this signature that's on almost all the pages because I don't think that you need it. This is just the title, and that's it. This is just the title. If this were like a date of when this drawing was, or maybe the size of the drawing or materials or something, that would make sense. But I don't need it on both pages, and actually, I don't need it on. on the, I really don't need it on any of the pages. Right, you know, because because no chapter designation. These are like drawings. Yeah. You know, like okay, for instance, we don't have that here. Why not? It's a drawing. It stands alone. It looks good. Well, this is a drawing that stands alone and looks good too. But we put it on here. So page number maybe because maybe we want to talk about something over the phone, and I'm like page 54. Yeah. But I don't need the whole signature uh, that's on most of those pages, and so. Tom, this this is probably whenever he starts getting into this, yeah. talking about you know when he first started doing these drawings, they were just images at first. But as he did more of them, that's when he starts to piece together storylines mm -hmm. or working with the same characters over and over. So now you're seeing them with a new tag team partner, or you're seeing these headlines that he's pulling inspiration from the magazines. Which man can I relate to that? You know, yeah. because wrestling magazines for me were hand in hand with comics when I was a kid at the grocery store. It'd be like I'm going to go to the magazines. And that's what I'd look at, wrestling magazines. It's like uh, that Steve Carell guy played some dude in a, in a movie, like based on a real guy. Yeah, like Fox that... Catcher? No, 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 no. That's the, rest, that's oh. the wrestling thing. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about... You can see how my mind would go. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, straight yeah, yeah. Yeah. wrestling. <laughs> uh, it, it's about a guy who was like a Vietnam veteran who got, who got his ass beat and fuck, it fucked up his head, got concussions oh, yeah, or yeah. something. And then he created this right. whole world with like dolls and stuff, and like he like lives in that world and mm -hmm. kind of like reenacts like the traumas that happened to him like through these dolls. And it's like this is Henry Darger, Vivian girl. It totally is. It's part of what you know. It's part of that appeal. And now we're getting into another piece that I really like, where you get to see these incomplete drawings. So then you get to see a little bit of how he's making this stuff because you look at these on a screen and they could be photos almost. Yeah. You know, you look at them from a distance and they're this very accurate thing but then you get to see sort of like the the you know warts and all of him putting putting these drawings together well it's it's an interesting question that i don't think we often consider it's like take commerce out of the question like like why do you do what you do if you take commerce out of the equation if you could just draw purely for pleasure what would you draw and very likely it wouldn't be like an intense set of like comic pages with all kinds of story but like you just if you just want to kick back and draw for fun what would that be and i i'm i guess this is like his answer to that look at how good the foot is Absolutely. where it's just slightly turned up like it. like the weight is is it's so flawless and you know tom i think that's uh an interesting thing to think about these if you could draw whatever you want if commerce weren't a thing yeah. i'd go further and say what if narrative Yes, isn't a thing exactly, or a reader right. isn't a thing yeah uh you know because i often think like i keep going back to street angel because it's like it's this device that is dynamic it lets me draw most of the Whatever stuff i want to draw, draw bouncing off walls yeah. fight scenes you know all these things that are like what do you want to draw mm -hmm. i make a list street angel fits most of those things but in a way like you know this is a guy who might be the best figure artist right. in, co in american comics he gets to do all those figure yeah, pieces. His, he, his sort of like kicking back, having some fun is so rigorous. You know? it, it really is. <laughs> it's so great whenever like almost black and white and the little hints of color, you know, like a red rope and a blue rope. Oh man, this is when Vince took over. Gorgeous. Yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, know what, you know, it's funny. We talk about like taking commerce out of the equation and now all these years later, here it is, a book, a product being sold with a price, uh, a highly anticipated book I would add too, so... Yeah, I was using commerce almost as a as an example of things that you could remove. Right. You know, like because in 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 my mind it really is like you think of the rigor of his comics and you get to remove some of that polish. Mm -hmm. uh, these still look incredible, but they're looser a little bit than you know. You see his artist edition and you see the whiteout where the lines being moved a sixteenth of an inch. Uh, these are definitely much looser. Uh, there's your cover image. You know, is a is a full piece that's mm -hmm. cropped on the cover. The black and white's so striking. It's what stood out in Woe Nelly whenever we were looking at Woe Nelly. Yeah, for some reason I thought Woe Nelly was going to be in this. Yeah, the fact that it isn't means that uh, they really should make the ma wrestling magazine edition of Woe Nelly. Eric Reynolds, you hear that shit? <laughs> let, let Jim design that stuff. He'll do it upright. 
These horizontal pieces, too, I think they're all like eight and a half by 11. You know, I think he's just drawing on like the paper that's handy. He'll do that shit. Like, like whenever he goes to a fresh convention and stuff, like he'll just sit down for like a day or two and just like bat out these like Maggie and Hopies on, on typing paper and just like bring them, sell them for a hundred bucks a piece. Look at how great she is with like the blue eye, eye shadow, you know, with a little bit of blue trim. And then he talks about not really liking drawing referees. So you'll see the referees <laughs> work their self out. Although I love it whenever there's like other dudes in the ring. It's, it's very see, fun. See, from that era, man, with like Gordon and Sully wearing that type of <laughs> shit. Yeah, that's like the lighter side of. <laughs> yeah. And it's cool that it bounces around between like color, almost photorealistic from a distance to black and white line work and now, you know, even pencil marks. So it's really cool. Like anytime you get into some of the uh, unfinished drawings, there's more as we get near the end. But I really like that quality too. You know what? I bet he's so like, I mean, obviously he kept these things, right? Like, so, so he has them. So it's not like they're not imprecious or something but maybe he doesn't even know like when he drew these things i think that's positive if he didn't write a date on i know i wouldn't be able to tell you when different drawings of mine yeah Yeah, this text down here might have been a placeholder of like oh we're gonna eventually put in the dates when you figure them out and then just never did it would make sense because otherwise why would you have this much why would you have that here wouldn't this be much better as just like let me just see the drawings you know what though it is kind of like the way you're accustomed to seeing things presented in an art book is like this, and then a little doot, doot, doot at the bottom, and you know, so it, it just for, but yeah. usually of information, yeah, yeah, and it's not like the title like, over and over I and kept over. Kept looking at it like, oh yeah, <laughs> guess not. It, and you know, Tom, some of the questions you had when we were talking about this coming in, the text does address a lot of it, yeah, and it does it does sort of give you some context to pull a larger narrative out of this because you'll see the same characters repeating. And when you combine them with some of the the titles and stuff on these like faux magazine titles, um, they give context to these characters mm-hmm. in different territories. You know, sometimes they're chasing the champion. Sometimes they are the champion. And that's kind of how wrestling works, too. Like wrestling's a really different thing if you look at it through history rather than I'm watching each episode. You know, it's mm-hmm. uh, even like heights of wrestling history. It's still 90 percent garbage if you sit down and try to watch like the whole episode. But how about this stuff for uh, this gets into is he referencing something? And if so, what? Because you can see like some of the drawing where it's like arms and legs in different positions and stuff. If you're referencing something, that wouldn't be a question, right? Once again, like we need the dates because there's clearly like different versions, right? And and I know I know his work uh, v- very well in terms of the comics and some of the more bouncy, bubbly stuff is later period work, you know? So like maybe he's not using reference like for this stuff, but some of this other stuff is probably maybe earlier, uh, so so he was so I so I don't think that that gives us much clue really. Yeah, uh, fair enough. But I do like seeing like the pencils and the multiple lines. Famous and stuff. for that shit, dude. Like <laughs> always, like searching. And he's the guy too who like talks about like he you know he doesn't pencil and then just ink. Like he puts that pencil mark down and then and then he he keeps going or he bails on it for a minute. Look how interesting this is where there's not even an indication of like shoelaces. But yeah. most of these do have the shoelaces indicated, but nothing there. That's kind of cool. And then I like where you're starting to see him spot his blacks. Yeah. And this is 100% personal. This just reminds me of, you know, like when I start inking something and this half ink, you know, and mm-hmm. the blacks are half filled in. Something weird and lively to me about these, like, half-finished drawings. Not that I uh, have any complaints for the finished ones. The tension on that right there is so, I mean, it's just so thoughtful. Yeah, and I think that uh, that may be ballpoint pen, the hatching part mm. in there. Because... Uh, ballpoint pen is definitely something that they call out in one of these little uh, interview excerpts this i assume is katie skelly's like vision for this book you know do the interview and then bring out the text in different pieces i think it's a fantastic way to combine or to make a book like this it really adds to it i would not enjoy this book half as much if i didn't have his words in there and it's almost like um it's not it's not a Q&A, you know, like you don't see a yeah. question ever. It's it's all just you're hearing Jaime talk about different elements of wrestling and of these drawings and I think that stuff is uh really fantastic. I wonder when you look at this, would you call that a comic? It's a bunch bunch of pictures I mean, that my are related with words. Definition of comic is so broad that um it would it would include this, but mine's super broad. Like my my definition is not the typical like comics definition. I mean, there's even stuff that look like captions, you yeah. know, and read like captions. And if you combine it with like his excerpts on top of it, it's another bit of you know like meta text or whatever. 
I just love it. I love not knowing an answer mm-hmm. to that question. You know, I mean, I'm I'm like you, Tom. I'm not too. I don't really care. Comic, not comic. Yeah, right. Uh, and I have other books that would fit in this yeah. category. You know, that are sort of like this. That are playing with text and playing with image in ways that. I feel, I feel like you know, uh, not for, a lot for me personally. Like Pim and Francie blew up my concept of what a comic is and what a comic isn't that kind of broadened it so like in the context of that this, this that's a right really in. interesting book to put next to this because uh-huh. it's another collection of some guy's art yeah uh wow yeah i never even considered like how those two are connected but that's a really good one and uh i don't know the answer to that question and it doesn't really affect how i enjoy this book but i am so happy this book exists you know something else dude like and this is just like maybe kayfabe like you see 1980 to 2020 it might be like those Chris Ware sketchbooks where, like, one image is from 1980. Like, like you know... Well, obviously, like, this early, early stuff. Like yeah. yeah. And and then I wouldn't doubt that it, like, jumps to, like, the 2000s really quick. Like, like maybe 090s stuff or something. Yeah. Well, you know, I was wondering... I thought maybe a bunch of it's from, like, uh, Will Nelly period. You yeah. know, there may be, like, chunks where it's like, oh, i got to figure out this wrestling part if I'm going to do this comic. Or you know, on some subconscious level, he's drawing a bunch of these and then it's like, oh, make a comic about this. So chicken and egg, you know, and, and maybe next time we run into him, we'll have a bunch of new questions it's, for him. It's fun, man. But, like it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, one of the things about the man's comics is it feels like a fully realized universe. And I mean, here's evidence that, that yeah. he's, he's thinking this stuff through so much to the point of, uh, actually drawing characters that, that never saw the light of day in the comics. And, and like, so there's those pinup pieces in the comic. Like those were the all stars of like the drawings or something like of all the characters he created. Like these are the ones that he let us see. Yeah. Well, if you have the right, uh, you know, Venn diagram stuff, like this book is like 99% of my Venn diagram overlap. So that makes me laugh. WWW, uh, United States Cham- Women's Champion. I feel like this might have been like the uh, the 90s tech bubble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'm so happy this book exists and it makes me hopeful for, you know, I think it expands what you can make in terms of like a nice high end book of a cartoonist work of their side work of their sketches and, and you know, the stuff that we don't often get to see, I want to see it all. Yeah. You know, show me the stuff that Dan Klaus has piled up that, that he hasn't published in comic book form. Show me Chris Ware's, you know, whoever, whoever the artist is, I, I, I'll go down this road. When, uh, when I was, I was in France with, with, uh, Klaus, Klaus for uh, one of his shows and he had these like tear sheet tracing paper, roughs for like the patient's cover or something or death ray and he was like this is the kind of thing that that alvin buenavitro just pulled out of the trash can <laughs> so like that's that's who klaus had and i guess jaime has katie skelly to dig out all of these cool wrestling i drawings. like the spine yeah it's that it's that same great, font great yeah. lettering that he does very cool yeah a lot of his hand all through this and uh like i said just as a book i'm really in love with this book right now so very awesome Tip of the hat to all these guys, and uh, I may make more wrestling comics, man. <laughs> yeah, super cool, man. K favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell, we'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what do you have? Join me on Patreon.com slash Jim Rug, where you can see my wrestling drawings and download a big PDF of those, along with a lot of comics and original art and all that good stuff at Patreon.com slash Jim Rug. Uh, check out Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, Fantastic Four Grand Design, and my YouTube channel, Total Recall Show. Red Room Comics, coming from the same publisher, Fantagraphics. Every issue completely self-contained, so see an issue, grab an issue. You can read the comics on my Patreon ahead of time, too. Patreon.com slash Ed uh, Hit my link tree in the description below this video. You can get links to all that stuff. Sign up for the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video. All right, man. Give them those marching orders, dude. I got to go get the scoop on the, that little, uh, the little bottom text, man. <laughs> Make more comics. <laughs>